Hey everyone! The 0.50.0 version for modern warships has finally been released to everyone, and this version introduces a lot more changes and items than the last version. So for today, I'll be giving you guys a review of this new update. In this new version, there are four new ships added to the game. The first new ship that's added is the long-awaited Tier 3 Epic Cruiser, the USS CGX-21. Despite being an epic ship, it's a bit outmatched by the USS Port Royal, which is a rare Tier 3 cruiser, due to having less speed, less maneuverability, and slightly less durability. It does have more firepower, but it doesn't make a big difference as it's only slightly more than Port Royal's firepower. CGX and Port Royal also share the same weakness of being very vulnerable to submarines, as neither of them has anti-submarine weapons. However, the CGX is a lot more vulnerable as it's slower and less maneuverable. This weakness has something to do with the fact that it's a Tier 4 ship. Since Tier 4 isn't ready yet, the ship has to be weakened so that it won't wreak havoc in Tier 3, and this is the ship we get as a result. This ship is available in the shop and has a price of 70 million in-game dollars. The second ship is the ITDDX. This is a Tier 3 rare ship, and it's considered to be the Tier 3 equivalent of IT Kaio Duilio because of its four cannons, but its performance is nowhere near being the Tier 3 equivalent of the performance of Kaio Duilio. Despite having four cannons, its firepower is still weak because it uses a very weak cannon that has a short range, and it's also impossible to replace it as it is within a triple locked cannon slot, so you only have one true cannon in this ship. As for the rest of its stats, it's in line with KDX-2 and Type-058. So overall, it's the weakest battle pass ship we've gotten so far. This ship will not be available in the store, it's a battle pass exclusive ship, and it's available as a final free reward for this month's battle pass. The third ship is the KRI Golik. This is the first Indonesian warship in the game, and it is the first Tier 1 ship that has been added to the game since the release of the early versions of modern warships. It's a very fast ship, much faster than the USS Hurricane, but it's also very fragile because it has a very low durability. This ship is available in the store, and it has a price of 150,000 in-game dollars. The fourth ship is the CN Type 053H. It is a premium Tier 2 frigate, but unfortunately, it's the weakest premium ship in the game. The main problem with the ship is its armaments. It only carries two kinds of weapons, which are a cannon and a grenade launcher. On top of that, its five lock grenade launchers, which are supposed to be the main advantage of this ship, are more like a disadvantage than an advantage because it uses HJJ-12, which is only good at extremely close range. However, the frigate doesn't have the minimum stats needed for extreme close range combat, so it will be very difficult for you to use this ship effectively, especially if your opponents are skilled in this game. Since this ship is a premium ship, it is sold in gold, and it has a price of 5,000 gold. As for the weapons, there are 10 new weapons added in this new version. The first new weapon that is added is the Marlin WS. It's a tier 1 cannon that came with KRI Golik, and this cannon has a unique feature that allows players to control their rate of fire, just like the A-22 grenade launcher. This cannon is very weak compared to other cannons, but it has a damage output that is nearly as good as the AK-176. This cannon is available in the shop, and it's sold in in-game dollars. Next are the new Tier 1 missiles, which are the Exocet and C-705 missiles. The Exocet missile is very similar to the CJ-10 if you look at their stats, but they have different overall damage outputs, and the Exocet missile has more overall damage output than the CJ-10. On the other hand, the C-705 missile is much more powerful than Exocet, but their overall damage output is the same due to its 10 seconds reload time. These two missiles are available in the store, and they're also sold in in-game dollars. Next is the HJJ-12. This grenade launcher is classified as a premium tier 2 enhanced weapon, but it's far from the minimum standard of a tier 2 premium weapon. This grenade launcher has a very long reload time, its accuracy is horrible, it has poor ammunition capacity, it can't hit underwater targets, and it has the lowest overall damage output. The only good thing about this grenade launcher is that it has good burst damage, but you will still struggle in using its advantage effectively due to its overwhelming disadvantages. This weapon is available in the store, and since it's a premium weapon, it is sold in gold. Next are the three new Tier 3 cannons, which are the Sovereponte, Otto Leonardo, 
and the TMF-155 cannon. The Savraponte is very weak and has a short range, but it's somewhat forgivable because it's effective against aircraft. So it's a cannon that is more dedicated to taking down aircraft than taking down ships. The Otto Leonardo is a powerful cannon and can propel its projectile much faster than any other rare Tier 3 cannon. However, it only has good burst damage. The overall damage output of this cannon is very weak. The TMF-155 is a legendary Tier 3 cannon, and it is currently the main competitor to the Monarch. This cannon is certainly much weaker than the Monarch, but it propels its projectiles much faster, and it inflicts a little more damage due to its rounds per shot of two. However, when it comes to their overall damage output, the two cannons are almost equal. The major drawback of this cannon is that its accuracy tends to be ruined when firing the second round, which is a problem when firing at long range, but it's not a major issue when firing at close and mid-range. The Savraponte is currently exclusive to ITDDX for its triple-locked cannon slot, while the TMF-155 is a Battle Pass exclusive weapon, which is available in this month's Battle Pass. The only new Tier 3 cannon in this update that is available in the shop is the Auto Leonardo, and it's sold in in-game dollars. Next are the two new Tier 3 missiles, which are the MK-2E and the Scalp Naval. The MK-2E is a rare Tier 3 missile that is very weak, it's comparable to Champ and Swarmer, but it currently has the best speed of all rare Tier 3 missiles. On the other hand, the Scalp Naval is a legendary Tier 3 missile, which truly lives up to its title as it's such a powerful missile that it even outmatches the DF-17. It doesn't have hypersonic speed, but it's the fastest non-hypersonic missile in the game. Moreover, it has decent durability, making it tougher for air defenses to intercept it. These two missiles are available in the shop, and it's sold in in-game dollars. Next is the new Epic Tier 3 Torpedo, which is the A244 SLWT. It's weaker than the torpedo added in the last version, and it's even weaker than Mark 48, but its overall damage output is slightly better than Mark 48 thanks to its incredibly low reload time. This torpedo is available in the store, and it's also sold in in-game dollars. Now for the aircraft, there are only two aircraft added in this new version, and those are the MIUSB and the AH-64E Block II compound. The MIUSB is an epic Tier 3 drone that is quite lethal as it has burst damage, and overall damage output that is nearly as good as the bombers. The only drawback that this aircraft has is that its most powerful missile and its guided bomb are very likely to be intercepted or flared due to being incredibly slow. The AH-64B2C is a legendary Tier 3 helicopter, and it's arguably the best helicopter in this new version. This helicopter is equipped with a Sea Venom missile, which is a lightweight anti-ship missile that can truly inflict a decent amount of damage on ships. As far as I know, this is the first helicopter in the game that can truly be harmful to ships. The only drawback to this aircraft is that it carries only a few rounds of Sea Venom missiles, so it's only effective in finishing your enemies that are very low in HP, but other than that, this helicopter is great. It has good durability, good spotting range, great speed, and great maneuverability. Unfortunately, these aircraft are not available in the shop. These two aircraft can only be obtained by purchasing this month's VIP pass with real money. Those are all the new items added to this new version. Now let's move on to the notable things added to the mechanics of the game. The first thing they've added to the mechanics of the game is the system for promo codes. Promo codes are codes that are used to redeem bonus items from developers. These codes will probably be distributed during events and the release of updates, and you can get these codes immediately from the community and some YouTubers. To use the code, go to the settings, and then click on account. You should immediately see the promo code underneath the blacklist. Next, click the open button, and then type in the code in the input text box. If you enter the code correctly, you should be able to receive the items within that code. Keep in mind, that the codes that will be given could have limitations, so keep an eye out for the developer's announcements, and use the code immediately after acquiring it. Next is that they've added a new behavior of aircraft which accurately attacks its target, and automatically returns to the ship for ammunition and repairs when needed, but after it was implemented, aircraft don't attack very often anymore, and they often return to the ship to steal the replenishments, which is very annoying because you can't immediately get a replenishment for the aircraft you're using without waiting for another couple of seconds. I hope that the developers will fix this problem as soon as possible, 
as it only added more frustration to the gameplay of the carriers, which is already very frustrating. Next is that they changed the system for acquiring the points needed for the tournament. To acquire points for the tournament, you have to win the match so that the points that you generated within that match will be reflected on the leaderboard of the tournament. Now the strongest players are the only ones that can acquire hero and legendary status. They've also redesigned the offline map selection, and they improved the UI for aircraft. Now they look awesome and very interesting. Those are all the notable things added to the mechanics of the game. In the gameplay, there are only two notable things that were implemented. They've improved the visuals of all small missiles in the game, and they've made another optimization. The FPS in this new version is now much stable than before as it doesn't often drop to 20 FPS anymore, and the game can reach and maintain 50 FPS in the middle of the match. However, this is only from what I experienced on the game on my phone, but I've heard a lot of players in the community saying that the game has also improved on their devices. So I guess I can say that the optimization successfully worked. Those are all the major changes in this new update. With all of the things that has been said and shown, what do you guys think about this new update? Did you like it? Leave a comment down below, I'd love to hear your opinions. Now that will be all for today, hopefully you guys like this video, and if you all did, please leave a like and subscribe to support me, thank you so much for watching.